It's particle FRQ time. This is calculus AB1, 1999, <clears throat> particle problem. Okay, so we got uh, a particle moves along the y-axis with velocity given by velocity equal to blah, blah, blah. Okay, t is greater than or equal to zero. The only thing that's important here is that you're, uh, because we're moving along the y-axis, we're moving up and down. And so um, your particle... I don't know where it's starting, but it's moving up and it's moving down. When we're going up, we're going at a positive speed, and we're going down, we're going at a negative speed. Okay, well, we'll reference that later probably. I don't know. I haven't looked at this in a little while. Let's see. Let's look at A. It says, in which direction, up or down, is the particle moving at time t equals 1.5 and y? So <clears throat> if velocity is positive, we're going to be moving up. If velocity is negative, we're going to be moving down at 1.5. So all you have to do right here is plug in 1.5 into your calculator to see if you get a positive or a negative answer. I say calculator because I'm assuming because it says 1 or yeah this is a, a problem number 1 it's in number 1 FRQ. <coughs> I'm assuming that this is a, a calculator problem because number 1 and 2 are calculator problems on the AP exam. So but anyways, let's uh, go ahead and do this. Instead of doing 1.5, I'm going to do 3 over 2. I like fractions better than decimals. Let's go 3 over 2. We'll sign. <coughs> see what this looks like. Uh, 3 over 2. And then we're going to square that. Um, that's it. Okay, and that's inside of sign. So, All right, so if we were to square that, yeah, see, if I plug in 3 over 2, I would get... 9 over 4, and sine of 9 over 4 is not common knowledge, so yeah, this is for sure a calculator problem, so let's pull this dude out. So I'm choosing to throw this uh, function inside of my y equals window, um, and then I'm going to use the table to find any values that I need, so I don't have to keep rewriting it. If I, if I define y sub 1 as my function, then I could just use y sub 1 any other time that I need it. I might need it later, I don't know. I'm just trying to be speedy about this and efficient. Alright, so there's my function. Uh, is x times sine of x squared. And let's, uh, so let's go to our table right now. If I go to my table, I press second table, oh, I have values already filled in. Well, that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to go to table set, which is right there, and I'm going to tell my calculator to ask me what my independent variable is. The independent variable is your x that you're plugging into the function. And I want that table to be blank, so I can pick the x's myself. Now, we have a 1.5 that we're plugging in. So I'm going to plug in 1.5, see what I get. Looks like I get a positive number. So you know what that means? That means at t equals, wait, where do we go? t equals 1.5, that means we're going up. I'm just going to say 1. Point, oh, what do we got? What was it? 1.167. And I'm going to say, therefore, the particle, I think I'm spelling particle wrong. Is it, no, that's right, is going up. All right, let's look at B. Okay, find the acceleration of the particle at time t equals 1.5. Acceleration, ooh, different keyword there. Uh, is the velocity of the particle increasing? at uh, t equals 1.5 y or not. Um, okay, so here's an overarching concept in calculus that y'all should know. If you have speed and you take the derivative of speed, you get acceleration. If you do the antiderivative of speed, you would get uh, amount or distance. I say amounts because it applies uh, to more to more than one problem, but amount is the amount of miles, which would be considered as distance. This would be your f prime, this would be your f double prime, and this would be your f. Okay, not always. I'm just saying, generally speaking. And right now we're at velocity. This is uh, this is speed. So we're at a f prime spot. Now if we want to find acceleration. We just have to take the derivative once to get the double prime. Uh, to, so that's what that's what we're gonna do. So let's um. Let's go B, and let's take the derivative of velocity. When I take the derivative of velocity, I get acceleration. So I'm going to put t equals, or t of a, and now I've got to take the derivative of this guy. 
Now, t is multiplying the sign, which has a t inside of it. So we have multiplication going on here. That means we have to use the product rule. The derivative of t is 1, and we're multiplying that by sine t squared. And then we're going to add to that t times the derivative of sine t squared. Now, because, um, I mean, you're always supposed to do a, the chain rule with trig functions. Always, 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 always. You see, if I did uh, the derivative of just a regular sine t, I would get cosine t, and then I would have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside here is 1, so we normally don't do the chain rule when we just have a t inside. But if you're always thinking, oh, I've got to take the, or do the chain rule every time I take, deri take the derivative of a trig function, then you're going to always do it right, hopefully. So we got t. Now we take the derivative of the second function. So the derivative of sine is cosine, so I'm going to put cosine t squared. But then we're supposed to multiply this by the derivative of the inside, and the inside is t squared, so the derivative of that is going to be 2t. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit. We can have sine t squared, let's put parentheses around that, plus, and then this is going to be 2t squared times cosine t squared. So now we're going to take this and we're going to plug in 1.5 to see if we are uh, we have a positive acceleration or a negative acceleration. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's go back to our calculator. First I'll write this in. Sine 1.5 squared uh, plus 2 times 1.5 squared cosine 1.5 squared. All right, calculator time. I'm going to go back to my y equals window, and I'm going to use a different line for this, and let's plug in our, our derivative right here. All right, there we have it. We have sine x squared plus 2x squared times cosine x squared. Let's double check to make sure we have that right. Uh, see so that's sine x squared plus 2x squared cosine x squared. Yes, that's right. Okay, let's go back to our calculator, and now I'm going to go back to my table. <clears throat> and it looks like it already plugged in 1.5 for me. It tells me that the y value for the second function for y sub 2 is negative 2.049. So let's write that down really fast because that's showing our, our work. Negative uh, 2. Point, what was that? Negative 2.049. Okay, so our acceleration is negative. That means we're concave down. That means we are slowing down. And the reason why we're slowing down is because the speed at 1.5 is positive, and this one is negative. If this was positive, and this was positive, the signs equaled each other. If the sign of, a, of acceleration equaled the sign of velocity, then we would be accelerating. So think about that for a second. This problem doesn't do it, but what if, what if this was negative 1.167 and this was a negative acceleration? Even though we're going, we have a negative acceleration, we're going a negative speed, which means that our speed is getting more and more negative. So that means we would be increasing. We would be accelerating. Is that what I was saying? Is the velocity of the particle increasing? Yes. Okay, so... <clears throat> When the sign of the velocity and acceleration is the same, increasing. When the sign of acceleration and velocity are different, decreasing. So since we're different here, I'm going to say, um, actually, we don't need to say therefore, because uh, velocity is greater than zero and acceleration is less than zero, velocity is decreasing. All right, next question says, given that y of t is the position of the particle at time t and that y of 0 is 3, find y of 2. Now, y of 0 is where the particle is starting. So if we were to look at what we started with right here, this particle actually is at a good spot. I didn't know this actually works out. Uh, this says that y of 0, we're at 3. So right here, we are at 3. Okay, so the particle is starting at 3. Now, what you want to do right away when you think about this, you go, oh, position, that's, that's going to be the antiderivative of the speed because the antiderivative of the speed will give you the amount of um, where the particle has traveled. 
okay? But it's only where the particle has traveled. We're starting at 3. So, like, let's say we take the antiderivative, um, and then we plug in 2 to see where our particle is. That's just going to give us the amount that the particle has traveled. It's not going to be giving us, it's not going to give us where our position is. So, uh, and that's what this question is asking. What is the position? So, this is what we're going to do. Since y equals the position, we're going to write it like this. We're going to say y of t equals, okay, now we're definitely starting at 3. And then we have to add and subtract how, my, how far we traveled or how far the particle traveled. So how do we know how far the particle traveled? Well, we're going to need the antiderivative. Uh, velocity, which is uh, this guy right here, will give us the speed of the particle. Acceleration will tell us if the, the particle is speeding up or speeding down. But if I do the antiderivative, that will give us the amount that the particle has traveled. Okay, so we're going to add to this 0 to 2 of v t dt. But I guess the more proper way to write this would be putting an x right here. No, putting a t right here and then saying v of x dx. I have to change this to an x because it has to be a different variable than this guy. And so our t right now is 2. So we're going to just cross this out and put a 2 right there. So let's take that antiderivative of our velocity function. Actually, we don't have to. We just uh, got to plug that into our calculator. Cool. All right, let's plug this into our calculator. We've got 3 plus, and remember v, v is stored into to our y sub 1 uh, function. So let's go over to our main window. So I'm going to hit second quit so I get to my main window. We're going to go 3 plus the integral. So we're going to hit math and then FNINT, FNINT is the integral, so I'm going to press 9, and then we got our integral. We're going to go from 0 to 2, and then in this spot right here, we're going to put our y sub 1. So hit the vars button, that's where you're going to find your variables. We're going to go y vars, press enter, no, for, yeah, we're going to hit 1, we want function. And then we want y sub 1, so I'm going to press uh, 1 for that, and y sub 1 goes in there, and then for right here, i got to put x, and then I say enter, and I should get my answer. That's 3.82, and then I'm going to round the 6 up to 7. You should always go to three decimal places to be safe. 3.827, 3.827. So we, our position is at 3.827. Okay, that's what I think my answer is, but let's read it to make sure. Given that y of t is the position of the particle at time, time t, and that uh, y sub zero, or y of 0, is 3, which we got right there, that's our starting point, find y of 2. Okay, so 2, 2 is time, right? So we start at 0, we go to 2 seconds later, or 2 minutes later, whatever, and then that's, that's going to give us the distance that we traveled. All right, now the last question says, find the total distance traveled by the particle. Now, total distance, as soon as you see total distance, you, your alarm should go off in your head. Okay, now when we do uh, the antiderivative of the speed, we're going to get the amount function. The problem with the amount function is that the amount function is only going to tell you, um, <clears throat> tell you like the difference of what you traveled. Here, let me give an example. If you um, travel up, that's going to be a positive. Let's say it's positive 2. This distance is positive 2. And then from there, you travel down, and that's going to be a negative, negative 1. Okay, so your function, your f function, the antiderivative of the speed function, will just give you, um, actually this is a, well, it will give you a positive 1, because positive 2 plus negative 1 will give you positive 1. So, does positive 1 tell you how far you traveled? No, actually it doesn't. We actually traveled a total of 3 uh, units, or 3 spaces. We went up 2, then we went down 1, which is a total of 3. So, in order to um, count this function, what we're going to do is we're going to do the absolute value of the, of the distance of the amount function so that we can change all those negative distances to positive distances and get our actual total distance traveled. So this is what you have to do, A, B, C, D. Okay, to do the distance formula or to find the total distance traveled, the amount traveled, you're going to go uh, the integral of the velocity and you're going to do the absolute value of that. 
Okay, so it wants the total distance of traveled from 0 to 2, so that's going to be our, our, um, our lower and upper bounds. Now we just got to plug that into our calculator. So let's go over to our calculator. Um, again, our y sub 1 is already in there. That's our velocity function. So I'm going to say math, uh, F-N-I-N-T. Let's go from 0 to 2. And then we're going to put uh, y sub 1 in there. So vars, then y vars, 1. And I'm going to select 1 again. And then over here, we're going to say x right there. Okay. Uh, I press enter. And oh, dang it. I didn't do the absolute value. Okay. I got to do that again. All right. Math 9, 0 to 2. And I do absolute value. So this time I hit math. And I'm going to go to number. And there's my abs. And then it, I put y sub 1 inside there. So I'm going to set y vars. And then 1. And then 1. OK. Uh, there you go. I put x right there. And boom. <coughs> Did I hit enter? No. Enter. OK. So my total distance traveled is 1.173. 1.173. 1.173, 1.173. Now that's total distance. Remember that first answer I got when I didn't take the absolute value? That was like this one right here. One is not the total distance that we traveled right here in this little side example. <clears throat> three is. This is like your answer three. All right, that's how you do it.